Check your grip, get your feet set, weight on the front, let's go. Oh boy, that is right down the middle and super extra crispy. Let's get into this one. Hey everybody, welcome back to Golf Test Dummy, the channel where I use my game to help your game and welcome to week number two of the stack and tilt review. Now this is gonna be a long-term in-depth review. How long? I'm not really sure, but I'm out here warming up, trying to get into this. This week I wanted to share with you some thoughts and some things that I've been working on that have really been helping me out. Some things that came from Tom Segudo, some ideas that came from Golf Tech, some of those things I've just kind of discovered on my own, but we're gonna cover a few of those today. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel down below, like and comment on this video, leave me your thoughts. Are you currently in the Stack and Tilt system? Is it the way you swing? Did you borrow a few thoughts from Stack and Tilt? Or are you just considering it? Either way, leave me some comments down below. But this is gonna be an ongoing series. You're gonna to wanna to follow along. I might have some special things coming up in coming weeks. I don't want to give it away, but I'm working on a few things in the background. We're going to put this to the test on course eventually. So you might want to stick around and see what's coming up next. Okay, let's recap. Some of the things that I did in week number one, if you haven't seen that video, you might want to go back and watch it. It's just got a few things that I was starting out with. And again, this is a review, an unguided review up to this point. Uh, just of what I know of stack and tilt. I've really been practicing with this very little, so uh, I haven't been at this for six months at this point. Again, this is week number two of the review, but last week I talked about the fact that what I understand is that they want you to have your feet flared out to allow mobility for your hips and shoulders so you can turn back and turn through without restriction and, and pain and causing yourself some injury. Another thing uh, that Stack and Tilt says is to put most of the weight on your lead foot at a dress and keep it there throughout the swing. No need to go through weight shift and trying to transfer your weight to the backside and move to the front side. And when I thought about that, uh, all the reviews that I've done in the past, I've learned a trick or two from those, a few things that I've kept with me along the way, and I do know that from channel lock or from the Jim Veneto swing or with stack and tilt, what they're really trying to do is create one axis point, one point of rotation to occur from. So if I put my weight on my lead foot and I keep it there throughout the swing, that really becomes sort of the anchor, the center of my, my axis of rotation. In channel lock, they put on their back foot and they swing around in the channel they're putting their weight on the back because that then becomes the point that they are rotating around. A lot of people say rotation, some people say turn. There's different terminology. You choose which one you wanna put in here, but your back and through motion, to simplify it, is what I'm talking about. So if you shift your weight, you are rotating on this leg, and then if you have to shift it back forward again, you're now rotating on this leg. So somewhere in all of these complex moves and series of movements and the swing and everything that's folding and unfolding throughout that entire period, why would we want to complicate it by trying to include two points of rotation rather than just one? This is not the only system that uses that. There are several. Go back and check out some of my other reviews from in the past four plus years at this point and let me know your thoughts. Does it make it easier? For me, it does seem to make sense. A lot of people have the concern that it's gonna take away power. That's not true, and a lot of these swing methods prove the other. So what are we gonna add this week? What piece of the puzzle are we gonna add this week? Well, I'll tell you. Something that Tom Segudo does in his videos from time to time is to kind of demonstrate this almost, it's not a perpetual motion drill like Sean Clements, which I did a review with that one as well, Sean Clements methodology. Uh, it's not a perpetual motion drill, but I guess it is a little bit like that of sorts. But essentially, since you're putting your weight on your front foot and you're keeping it there, and it's not 100%, they're, they're saying, you know, just a majority of your weight on your front foot. It can vary from person to person. I tend to keep quite a bit on the front foot. And one of the things that he'll demonstrate is how he controls the low point and how he can hit the same place in the ground 
time after time, as long as he keeps his left arm straight, maintains the radius, and he doesn't shift back and move the center of his circle, and he just kind of rotates on that fixed anchor with a straight left arm. And he kind of demonstrated that going back and forth and hitting the same place on the ground time and time again. And it got me to thinking, it's like, well, if he's just showing that because that's the concept that this is really trying to get us all to model ourselves around so that we can have consistency of low point, which if you talk to any pro golfer or any coach, they're gonna tell you that consistency of low point is a huge factor in becoming a good ball striker. If that's what he's doing to demonstrate it, what happens if I would just expand on that idea? So I make a few swings like that, and again, I'm not making full swings just yet, but I kind of think about that and boom. And I just try and make that little swing by keeping my weight fixed there and really just keeping my left arm straight and just feeling that strike in the same spot. If you don't move a lot of your anchor points, it becomes almost a slightly difficult task to have an inconsistent low point. So when trying this little back and forth sort of quote unquote perpetual motion drill and just keeping my weight there, keeping my arm straight, trying to get my hands to be ahead, you know what I mean? I kind of felt this, this groove and I thought, you know, all you'd have to really do is expand on that to a certain extent to make a good swing. And again, that's not even a full swing. It's what feels like a half swing. That's a seven iron going out to about 150 yards and it doesn't feel like it's even three quarters. So I'm just now building up. I haven't even gotten to a full swing. I haven't even gone through the entire bag yet and hit all of my clubs. I haven't even experimented with driver at this point because like I said in the first video, I'm trying to start slow and small. But there's a couple of other little things. That little drill really helped me out. I sat out here and just groove that a little bit the other night. There's another thing that's, you're gonna put most of your weight on your lead side and you're gonna keep it there throughout the swing and you're gonna try and maintain this this shoulder tilt, you know, you're replacing front bend with equal parts side bend at the top of your swing. We talked about that in the last video. And when you come down into the golf ball, rather than trying to use your hands and arms to move this club into position, I just kind of leave it there. And then instead of turning, which might let me reverse pivot and go back the other way, I actually feel a shift forward. I actually feel like I get just a little bit more forward. It's not huge, and I wouldn't want to call it a bump, but I think it is definitely a little shift even more onto this front foot as I come down into the impact zone. So if I kind of take it small and slow, and again, I'm thinking keep my hands ahead. I just make a little swing, just slow, and I feel like there's a little bump toward the target. So then the big question with a lot of these things and just golfers in general that I've seen on a lot of YouTube videos and that I've been asked in a lot of my videos is, well, what do I do with my hands and arms? There's, there's been a lot of occasions where the answer to that is, well, really nothing. <laughs> your, your hands and arms will certainly be doing something, but I think one of my big issues, and probably a lot of you out there as well, is that I get overactive with my hands and arms. I get to where, I, in my life, any time I wanted something to happen that was going to be difficult, or any time I wanted to be better at something or get more out of something, I always put in more effort, and it always worked. The more effort you put in, the more you would get out. And I'm telling you, on an individual golf swing, that's not how it works. Overall, the more practice and hard work you put in, the more time you dedicate to get better at golf, sure, 
that's going to speed up the process. That's going to make you better. But on the swing itself, putting in more effort actually works the opposite direction. So we're trying to take the effort levels down with any swing model. And as far as the hands and arms go, I'm almost trying to make sure that they do nothing. Now, of course, they're going to do things. The weight of this club is going to force them to do things when you apply speed. But I'm trying to actually do nothing with my hands and arms if I can help it. Kind of like that. Baby draw down the middle. Again, not making full swings, not going all out yet. I think there's plenty of power left in the tank. I could use some of that power. I need a little bit of that power because I've had a distance loss in the last few weeks before starting this review. So I'm really excited about what this can bring in the coming weeks and possibly months. So again, I get the weight over the front foot. I try and have the hands and arms do as little as possible. <laughs> I feel like I got a little bit out of sync right there. And maybe it wasn't my best swing, but I still had super solid contact a little whip and pop on the ball, plenty of power in reserve, and I feel like I'm coming back halfway. And then you can see I've got a sawed off finish, a little tin cup style on this side, because in this zone, what I'm trying to do is get my hands just to come in as I tilt back this way. And then through impact, I just wanna turn my hips and my shoulders, try and get my hips and shoulders a little open at impact, Keep the hands and arms, if I can, kind of in the same place. Hands leading into impact. And from here, I'm opening up and trying to get my chest at the target while my hands are still low and not flipping. It's difficult for me, and I still can feel that I flip at times. It's not ingrained. It's not going to be ingrained this week or next week or probably even next month. But I, I've had problems with the flip and adding loft and impact. And that's essentially because when you get out of whack, if you have good hand-eye coordination, you do what's necessary to get the ball to contact the center of the club face. So I'll just stand back sometimes if I feel like I need a little refresher. And I'll just feel that pivoting on this foot. It's an anchor point. It's the point that my swing goes around. Again, that's, that feels like it's from here to here. And that's carrying probably out over 140 with very little effort and nowhere near full swing. Just to kind of go back over everything before I wrap all this up, the big keys in week number two, the little perpetual motion drill trying to just stay on that anchor point, not use the hands and arms, and get the body to start turning back and through and contacting the same point on the ground over and over and over. Just practicing that without a golf ball is great practice, and you get a really good feel for rotating around that, that lead side. And you're just, you've got your, your forward bended address, you're just replacing that with side bend at the top of your backswing, same angle, same amount, you're keeping your spine in its same orientation, you're just allowing your shoulders to turn around it, okay? So that's one, the perpetual motion type drill. Number two, realizing that the hands need to be ahead at impact. They need to still have some angle between the shaft and your left arm at impact. If you don't do that correctly, if you don't try and get your hands to lead the race, you're going to have a flip. You're going to hit the ball higher. You're going to hit the ball weaker. You're going to be burning all your speed before you get to the golf ball. And the third thing is that little, when you get over the ball, that little shift, you actually gain toward the target side as you're turning back down and through the golf ball. That little shift really, it does a couple of things for me. It adds a little bit of power without any more effort. And it really ensures that I'm getting that great, crispy contact. So I'll hit another one here. See what we can do. 
Yeah. That feels like another half swing. Another half swing carrying out to what looks like 145, 146 with a seven iron. I mean, you could play with that. I could play with that. I could score with that. 144, 151 total. So that's the progress on week number two. Those are the things that are helping me out. Be sure to stick around. Like I said, subscribe, click the bell, click the bell and select all. There's tons of you guys that are watching these videos. You're not subbed. You're not getting the notification. You're missing videos. Stick around on this one. I'm telling you, I think I got some special stuff coming for you. See you next time.